really buys into that. Well, I know the Iowa Hawkeye fans love to hear this, but the Iowa Hawkeyes are the defending national champions, six returning All-Americans. Well, we're in Car Carver Hawkeye, and they are filled the arena, and they're trying to break the record. So, you know, they have a lot to be proud of, but they also going to have a tough match here tonight. So they got Charlie Falk, they got Alex Sertzis, they got Joey Slayton, Jay Borschel, Phil Ketty. They're all, uh, you know, returning All-Americans. So uh, they're led by Brent Metcalf. So, you know, those guys follow brands around, and they're still here. Every time we get together with Iowa and Iowa State, there's some kind of surprise. It's a history of upsets. What do you think about it tonight, Jim? Well, you saw that in the open, what the, all the surprises and the falls, and we really don't know for sure, but I tell you what, it looks like a great one. This is the most competitive and the most difficult environment to keep compete in in any sport, and now you've got 16,000 screaming uh, Iowa fans, and Iowa State comes in here with a very talented team. Tell you what, this whole environment makes you be proud to be part of this wrestling tradition in Iowa. Dan Gable, I'll give you the last word. What about tonight? Well, I think it's going to come down to a lot of things. And the bottom line is that all the experts have it very close. And the only way it wouldn't be very close if somebody won all the close ones. So, and I don't think that's going to happen here, but it could. So right now, I'm telling you, it's hard to predict. Well, we're not going to predict, but we're going to show you the lineups right now. And the lineups, we're going to start at 125 tonight. 125 pounds between Charlie Falk, returning All-American, upstart Tyler Clark. Two All-Americans, um, Fanthorpe for Iowa State versus Slayton, or Daniel Dennis, we don't know who yet. 141, Gallic versus Surtis. 149, Mueller versus Metcalf. 157, Kyler Sanderson, Kale's brother versus Matt Balwig. And then at 165, up a weight class from last year, Ryan Morningstar for Iowa versus John Reeder. 174, jo Jay Borschel, returning All-American, up against Dirk Duke Burke. Philip Ketty, 184-pounder for Iowa versus Jerome Ward at 197. Jake Varner up from 184, where he's twice been a national runner-up versus one of three, Lofthouse, Beatty, or uh, uh, Laura. And then at 285, heavyweight, we've got the Zabriski from Iowa State versus Dan Erickson. And what's great to see about that is all those rank numbers behind both those names. I mean, you take a look at these two teams by historical standards. I mean, it's as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets, and history is going to be made, hopefully. But if it's not, uh, you know, one of those things that's close. Well, talk to us about the history that's already been made tonight here with the crowd. Well, we don't know yet. We, we think that's what one of the history is. The, the state above us has that record, and we have to sell you know, a couple more tickets, and we'll find out a little later, but uh, we're close. We have standing room only, and I see standing room only people, so it looks good. And what we're talking about is the all-time world record for college wrestling dual meet. Minnesota has the record, 15,695, something like that. And uh, the fire marshals have opened it up and said, you can put 16,000 in here if you can put 16,000, and I'd say we're within a few. And so history in the making, and it's uh, very appropriate with Iowa, Iowa State. Captains, Captains meeting, are out there, yeah. The, the meeting extent the of the mat. Of course, Iowa State has a new look here this year with the uh, with the uh, cardinal gold uh, uniforms. Looks like kind of what they've done in football uh, with Iowa. It looks like a blackout tonight. Um, a lot of black t-shirts. Right, and they got some flags. Little rags there. Uh, no, they're going to throw around. And they're starting out at 125, that's right. Starting out at 125, it'll be All-American Charlie Falk going up against Tyler. The referee is Mike Haggerty from Blue Springs, Missouri. A wrestling coach and a longtime official, one of the best in the nation. Tyler Clark, a sophomore, already ranked fifth in the country. Undefeated on the year. Charlie Falk. Going into his last campaign and finished uh, sixth last year. What a tough weight class that was at 125 uh, last year, and particularly in the Big Ten. Well, Falk, um, he just has come along so uh, well, I, I think. He started as a true freshman, and um, you just saw him gain strength. A redshirt year helped him. And um, Tyler Clark is kind of where Falk was a couple of years ago, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would really say that because it, uh, uh, maybe learning how to become a disciplined wrestler out there. I think that's what Falk has done, is it's gotten more aggressive, more controlled, very close to uh, beating Angel Escobedo in the uh, 
uh, I believe it was the quarters or the semis. Really Let's close match. It, and and uh, Escobedo right ended up being the national champ, too. Exactly. Yeah, he was up, and uh, he got bear hugged inside trip there for four, and uh, he was looked like he was going to win the match. Really, he was controlling it, and so he's just a, you know, a matter of seconds of being away from an NCAA finalist and end up finishing sixth. So this is a big test for Clark. Neither wrestler are really uh, opening up yet. They're, they're feeling each other out a little bit. Yeah, but if you see this, the setups there, I mean, I really think that Falk, who likes to go to that, there, a single leg shot right there. And that's the shot that Clark, or the leg that Clark leads. So it looks like nice job of pulling off. Now, Butterhead situation, this is deep. Oh. Oh. No back points so. Tyler Clark did a great job of coming off his back. Yes, he did. I mean, there was not even a count. Even though he was thrown to his back, he got off it in a hurry. And that's Two. what makes Falk so dangerous. He came in on that single leg and looked like Clark was all but out, squared his hips, but his hips were a little bit too close. And with those long arms of his, he was able to show his range and suck that what, in and what's working, gentlemen? get we the takedown. And that takedown's worth two points. It's 2-0 for Falk. And I would say, Bell wouldn't it. you, that that's the difference between Charlie Falk three years ago. He couldn't have done that. Right. Didn't have the strength. Uh, I don't think so. Didn't You're right. Because, uh, you know, that wasn't easy. Uh, Clark looks like he's muscled up a little bit. Okay, and uh, tell you, he did a pretty good job of uh, stopping that for a while. Just stayed with it. Now, right? Nice job of bouncing off and just limiting that to a takedown here. But beautiful technique by Falk. Clark, Tyler Clark is a sophomore from Davenport, Iowa, went to Bettendorf High School. Charlie Falk, a senior from Strawberry Point, Iowa, but he did his prep wrestling at Apple Valley, Minnesota, where he was a four-time state champion. I think this is where Falk, being the senior here, wants to stay in the top position here as long as possible. Clark's not moving too much. He's just kind of basing out, so it uh, yeah, uh, makes it easy to ride somebody that way, but it makes it hard to look like you're doing anything. And when you say basing out, you see how wide his knees are away from his hips. Wide base, working up. Falk's not going to let him go easily here, so Clark really has to work. Nice job there. Now he's back in on a shot of his own. We're neutral, guys. We're neutral. Wrestling. Kind of muscle, kind of muscle in the leg there instead of uh, driving and penetrating. He's using his arms too much, and he got extended. Falk's using a good hip leverage. Exactly continue, correct guys, here. He get, got in there and got his shoelaces flat and lost his drive. That was one point for Tyler Clark for an escape there. So yeah. the score is two to one in favor of Charlie Falk with 15 seconds left in the first period. But Falk this does have a minute four riding time. Well, clearly a stalemate situation. But you know, being down there underneath there on that leg shot for a while, that's an advantage Falk here making uh, Clark work. Clark has really had to work hard, not only to get off of his back there on that takedown, but also to get out. He really used a lot of energy there. Right, he looked like uh, you know he just needed a little more penetration because he was in on the leg good, but he just kind of stopped and hung on, went, dropped onto his knees. Hey, stay here. Falk gets a choice, down. and he chooses down. down. There's right. no deferring about Green's it. Down. Charlie Falk says, I want to go under, and I want to score some points. Okay, well, I tell you, this is a real Red important 10 or 15 right? seconds okay. here Lockdown. Uh, for either no side movement. to see if they can Red, establish some kind of dominance in the match one way or the other. Already 104 riding time here for Falk, so it looks like Falk right will be able to break that for Iowa State. Coming back in on the leg here. Real scramble situation. Like this is where Falk. He's still, still riding, it. but it, you know, it's going to be tough to break that grip. It's tough to break the grip, but you're really making Clark underneath work hard. Okay, He's got his elbows up above his, uh, his head, and he's really working hard. And look at the great job that Falk is doing, keeping his hips low and his chest up. That's really still making Clark work hard. He's going to have a hard time breaking that grip. He's getting riding time, so it's racing that riding time, and it's really uh, a tough situation. Hey. Same way. Actually, if Clark, if, if uh, fatigue isn't a factor, you know, that, that helped him. Same way. Right now, fatigue doesn't look like We're a factor in this match. We're doing a good job on the Let's keep it that way. Lock down, Green. No movement. Set in tight. Red at you. Clark starting on the right-hand side here. Now he's trying to work the leg in. He's got both, both legs, legs in. in. Key here, he's going to try to keep his... Arms underneath Falk's armpits right there and stretch him out. Depends whether Falk can reach down and grab a leg, which I don't think he's getting. No, he's got to create some hip separation here. He's fighting it off, grabbing the instep. He's got to limp him a little bit to one side or the other. He's getting his head. Yep. He's getting high there. Oh. Comes right back in. And he's this up, time he's, he's not able to lock he's, his hands. Yeah. 
They're still getting the riding time, though, guys. Still getting the riding time. And he's going to end up trying to get a stalemate, see? Yes, he's got it. Looks like he's got it. He's got that leg, but Clark has to continue wow. to move up. I just don't understand that. I mean, when you look back, I do not understand why that wasn't one point. Now I do, but that's not the situation it was. So that's, well, that is, they're uh, still working they're on still it They're still getting here. the riding time through right. all that. I'll tell you what, uh, it's, he either should break it or... Referee is really slow on the stalemates he, here. He, he, he was slow on that call. He's almost going to get two here. There's two right there. Wow. I'll tell you what. It, it, I mean, it was a tight situation. Yeah, I did not think that was um, it correctly called, uh, but uh, it was just a slow call there because... Well, you know, he he had a, whether he it had was or wasn't, it was a tough call. It yeah. was definitely a tough call. Yeah. As a result, though, he's able to go ahead and finish the, uh, the period fall with a reversal. And, you know, in, 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 in big matches, Dan, you got to, you know, you finish the period on top, you're usually going to be all right. Riding time's not a factor right now, except for Iowa State. He's got 31 seconds now on the other side, even though he's down 4-1. So it could be a factor if he could escape and get a takedown. 4-1 in favor of Charlie Falk. Starting the third period, there's no riding time advantage for either wrestler. Tremendous ride by uh, Tyler Clark in that second period, uh, but right at the end, Charlie Falk was able to get out and uh, score a reversal. Well, that's the most difficult thing to do in the sport is to be able to get out from a, a, a good leg wrestler's legs, and it looks like those legs were in pretty tight, and Falk did a nice job of just methodically being patient, on, creating some hip separation and getting the reversal. Well, so, he's smart here getting this riding time to a situation where if he does escape, the bottom line, he gets taken down, he, you know, he can't get the minute riding time, so. That's it, working well, in, we've got plenty of room, a lot of room. Clark has really no, shown no. On the bottom, he has yeah, not it, when exploded. You, when you bury your head like that and bring your hips up like that, you're really not putting any back pressure into the man and really pretty easy to follow and drift with the, with your opponent. Hands up, ready. The end way that, you know, you, you take it, sitting in the corner here, you're taking a, and not Holding how the officials down. call in the Red match, down. and these are very slow stalemate situations, you know, which down. means the riding Three. time's gonna extend a little bit further. Charlie Falk from Iowa coming on top, the favorite. These the returning All-American, the higher ranked wrestler, ahead four to one here with a minute six left in the third period. Okay. I don't know if we mentioned the referees yet, but they're both highly ranked, and uh, uh, there's a new system for picking uh, Big 12 and Big 10 referees this year, and I think it's uh, Charlie Yagla is in charge of that. Great. Charlie and, uh, so he's probably... Uh, Mike uh, Haggard, he's one of the great referees yeah. in the nation, and Gary Mayab uh, from the same area, Kansas City area. Both of them from the Kansas City area, and they do a lot of officiating. Very good officials. And, of course, this is much like you'd see at a national wrestling tournament where you have two officials refereeing a match. Side judge and a lead official. The lead official is, just as you said, the lead official. Charlie what he Whoa. says goes. Look at that. Look at that. He's got a chance. Four to two. That's yep. an escape for Tyler Clark. It's four to two. There is no riding time. A takedown would tie the match. Well, Clark was able to get in the shot. A nice job again by Falk, getting his hips back. There Angle. is no warnings for stalling. Twenty seconds. He's in on the leg again. He's able to He's in drive tight. Through, He's in tight. He's in tight. Notice how he went to his own elbow there instead of dr continuing He's to drive tight. through. Doesn't He's look in like going to get it, though. Yeah, it's close. There's only about three seconds to go. Good start. Good start to this match. Tough match. Both wrestlers wrestling hard there all the way to the end. Buck wins 4-2. to two. Makes the score Iowa 3. Who's Iowa coming? State 0. Who's coming out for the Hawks? For the Cyclones, we don't know who's coming out for the Hawks. Need to be Joe Slayton, the NCAA runner up last year. I don't know what was da Rams is. Daniel Dennis. Is it Dennis? I don't know. Either or. Those are the two fellows that weighed in. Ready to wrestle in 133 pounds for Iowa State, a junior pick. Nick Van Thorpe, the junior, eight now Slayton. ranked fifth. And it's wow. Joy Slayton, the wow. defending national runner-up. When you, wow. when you say wow, well, Dan, what do you mean? I didn't think they'd use it. I haven't been around much. Joe Slayton ranked number one in uh, two of the major polls. The other poll 
outranking uh, Dennis because he's been wrestling more than Slayton. So two wrestlers spending a lot of time at 133 for the Hawkeyes. And Tom Brand sends out Joe Slayton against Nick Fanthorpe from Iowa. Both juniors. I think that's two rare. Wow. That's it. Yeah, Joe Slayton patented. I'll tell you that. Plant. Elbow pass by. He just does this consistently. He gets a hold of an opponent's right elbow. He passes it through and goes right into a shot. Very impressive. Take hold. If you just joined us, Iowa leads 3-0. Charlie Falk, their 125-pounder, beat Tyler Clark 4-2. We're in the second match at 133 pounds. Joe Slayton, last year's NCAA runner-up for Iowa, out in front fast with a 2-0 lead, a quick takedown over Nick Fanthorpe. Also a returning All-American who placed fifth for Iowa State last year. These two wrestled in the quarterfinals, I believe, at the national tournament last year. And match went to overtime. Of course, in last year's duel, Slayton was able to get a come out and get a big win. At that time, Fanthorpe was rated higher than Slayton, and Slayton just came out, shot out of a cannon, got two takedowns in the first period. Okay, lock much down, like man. today. No movement. Green, cover him up. Let's go. So Slayton owns a 2-0 um, lead over Fanthorpe in their two matches previous. If I would have uh, guessed, I would have thought Brands would have no sent out uh, no Dennis based on what just what time of the year it is. But you know what? Uh, Brands is really competitive. <laughs> you know, and he's going to, oh, he's, he's got an arena here full of people. He's going to do what he thinks Action is, ne is edge, needed Action to win this here. meet. Exactly. That's... I mean, you've got the NCAA runner up here. That's, get him in. Fanthorpe from Naperville, Illinois, North High School. A junior, Joe Slayton, Let's Cedar Rapids, go. Iowa. Kennedy High School went to Virginia Tech to join Tom Brands when Coach Brands was out at Virginia Tech, transferred back here, along with three other Virginia Tech wrestlers who are in the lineup uh, the last year and this year for Iowa. We'll talk about that as we go along. I think both these wrestlers do a good job of uh, fighting for head position. You see that Slayton holding position right there. He likes to go off that elbow tie, passes it, gets in on that uh, right leg of uh, Fanthorpe, and then Fanthorpe is more of kind of a swing single guy. And right now it's very difficult to get that swing single. Wow. <laughs> he landed on his head. Yeah. Well, he, like, he, he just totally commits to wow. that. Once he gets that elbow tie, <laughs> he just pretty... totally commits to it. I mean, it was like his head bounced off the mat, and he did it himself. I think there's another guy on the Iowa team that does that. It's Mike Zaddy. Probably learned it from there. Action here! Two to one with 25 seconds left in the first period here of the 133 pound match. The score is two to one in favor of Joe Slayton for Iowa with early takedown. Fanthorpe escape. Oh, right. You know, I see what you're talking about, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. He looks a little flushed right now. He does. He, he, his color is even, looks like uh, it, it's a weight cutting thing this earlier in the year. Well, he probably didn't do it as early as he should have. And so right now it's kind of, he's starting to get adjusted, but it's one of those things that um, Red. take down Red for Fanthorpe puts him ahead Red three to two. Down. Going into the second period, Fanthorpe gets a choice hey, and he chooses Stay down. It seemed a little easy. Elbow yeah, it just seemed a little easy. A little That's half counter shot goal. that wasn't there. Yep. Just easy spin around. So, you know, that could be attention, Red. you know, focus. Could there. be uh, whether he's ready to go or not. And, uh, yeah, find what, out, I guess. Whatever it is, it's a huge confidence builder. That was a caution on Fanthorpe from underneath. He jumped the gun. Mike Haggerty puts a caution onto Fanthorpe. That's his first one. Escape. Fanthorpe makes a score four to two in favor of the Cyclone here early in the second period. Tim Johnson, along with Dan Gable and Jim Gibbons, Iowa, Iowa State here at Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. 133 pounds, Iowa leads 3-0 after 125, shot. and two more for Banthorpe. He just uh, doesn't seem to have uh, his legs under him. No, this is not the same guy we saw last year at the national tournament. This is the he's same actually, match. He's actually got him in, uh, in a pinning situation here with the Turk. You got the Turk elevated, the bottom yeah. lip, bottom hips returned. The back will follow. He's getting back points. And he's close to being, it's, uh, he is putting the pressure on. Three points, back points for Fanthorpe. The score is nine to two. Things changed in a hurry, didn't it? Really did. 
And, it, and the match isn't over yet either. You got three minutes to, uh, to wrestle yet. Well, I'll tell you what, the, uh, the uh, Cyclone bench is wanting a stalling call here and will certainly pay a lot of attention to see how this is called going forward. Warning stalling on the Iowa wrestler, Joe Slayton, underneath, behind 9-2, and Fanthorpe is just really putting a lot of pressure. Got the inside wrist, trying to drive, far wrist, going back and forth, one side to the other. This bench has made the decision here, the Iowa State bench made the decision to stay in the top position, only 20 seconds left, less than that right here. Well, they're looking pretty tough there and they actually have turned him once and almost turned him again so this is not the same guy we saw last year you're, just, not right you're now, talking not to right Joyce Slayton I was uh, 133 founder who was an NCAA runner-up last year behind got a stalling point at the end one point Joe Slayton for stalling Nick Fanthorpe leads 10 to 2 going into the third period over the Last year's NCAA runner-up, Fanthorpe, of course, was fifth last year. Two Americans going at it. Right there, you see the second angle on the, uh, where he's got the leg elevated. Of course, the hips turn, the back will follow on that near arm, near leg turn. That's where he got all of his back points. And I think that, uh, you know, the Cyclones have got to be considering major. Scores already 10-2. A quick takedown by Joe Slate. Slayton put himself ahead two to zero, but it's all been Nick Fanthorpe since. Out in front, 10 to two, he's got riding time. Well, as easy as things were on the feet for uh, Fanthorpe here, it's kind of strange to be able to go ahead and he's, he's really working hard in the top position, but you've got to be thinking bonus points for your team if you're cheering for the Cyclones, but... Uh, well, they got the bonus right they, now. Yeah, they do, but the... Uh, and I don't think uh, Joey's looking like he's gonna go too many places here. I see what you're asking, um, Jim, because it's like how much could Joe Slayton ward off any takedown attempts from the feet is what you're asking. And uh, it doesn't look like he could. I don't think so. Like so could, you take so. a look at the strategy there, and you have to take a look at the bench. You say, oh, this is uh, an opportunity. Keep working, guys. Keep working. Uh, maybe going by the wayside. And maybe they're looking for the stalling calls uh, more. But That's uh, not going to happen. It's, well, and it's not going to take you to your 15 point. They're going to get one here. One red. Yeah. But that's probably the last one. Maybe get, you might get two more, but that would be 13, so. And you, you might know. be able to get it on the feet they, from a they, tactic They could standpoint. even probably get two takedowns. Well, no doubt, Dan, this is the first big surprise of the meet. This is the. Well, the surprise of the meet is you know, who went out there. Yeah. <laughs> you obviously little bit, know a little bit more about the inner workings here of the, of the program, but uh, the real, real big surprise here that, because uh, this is a competitive young man here, not to see him in this condition here. A little surprising. Well, I know that uh, Fanthorpe's name was misspelled a couple times in the paper here, not this this Work week. So in. he's people are going to know that yeah. his name's Fanthorpe. You know, it's a big win for him right here. Big win for him, and he did it in fashion that didn't look so good. Yeah, he uh, he had uh, Slayton a pounding, and uh, Slayton's head still on the mat can hardly get back to the middle. The score with uh, riding time 12 to two, a major decision. Nick Fan. Fanthorpe puts the Cyclones on the board. It's all tied up three to three, going into 141 pounds. Congratulations to Anthony Kimmons and David Fortnite. We're back at Carver Hawkeye Arena, where Iowa State Cyclones lead the Iowa Hawkeyes four to three after two matches, 125, 133. Now we're at 141 pounds. A couple All-Americans going against each other. Nick Galley, Jr who is ranked second for the Cyclones going against Alex Surtis, an All-American two years ago for the Hawkeyes, a senior, undefeated, ranked third. Another really big match here for the uh, dual meet. These two guys, I, you know, I think pretty evenly matched. It, you know, we, we talked at 133, I think maybe who dodged the bullet at 133 were the Hawkeyes because uh, the Cyclones had it going and Fanthorpe probably could have disqualified him with the stalling if they'd gone to their feet just from an observation there. And so the real bullet that was dodged and we'll see how it works out because I don't think there was any doubt that uh, Fanthorpe was on his way to a tech fall or, or better. Good point. Take a look at these two wrestlers. I, I really thought, and we kind of talked about this before, 
the, the meat, Dan, is that uh, this first period here is really important for the Hawkeyes in this We're match here. Gallic very Gallic's very dangerous. Yeah. yeah he, he has some stuff that's really uh, unusual, and he can usually um, come out and take it to you in that first period in some situations. Gets down, and uh, it's not over yet, though. He's got just started. One minute in the match here. Two highly recruited preps. Gallic, a four-time state champion, undefeated from Arizona. Search is a four-time state champion, undefeated from Indiana, coming into what is now the two top programs in America, number one and number two. And it's a pivotal match here in the meet between Iowa State and Iowa here in Carver Hawkeye. Cyclones lead four to three after two matches. Good move last year to get uh, red shirt for Alex Serxis, I thought. You got a uh, Russell and Dan LeClaire that was coming over here with uh, uh, Tom from Virginia Tech and had a great season last year, just only a match or two away from being an All-American. Real strong uh, Big Ten tournament. But the, uh, one minute, one. Kind, of, get, kind get, of cat and mouse here a little bit here. Yeah, and I think that favors Gallic right now because Gallic's uh, explosive wrestler in the down position and the feet, maybe a little bit stronger there. Gallic had a big win earlier, about a week and a half ago, in the All-Star Exhibition, and search us in there. That's two right there, yeah. yeah. Well, that was a nice move. He hit that, he hit, really hit at the right angle. So he didn't have to do hardly anything. That's Huge a finish. for Searches. Knocked him right to his butt. Very nice. 2-0 in favor of the Hawkeye. Searches back in the lineup after a year hiatus. All-American two years ago as a junior. Took a red shirt year. Escape for Gallic. Two to one in favor of Sertzis, Alex Sertzis, the senior for the Hawkeyes, over the junior, Nick Gallick. I call this match and uh, the 65-pound match is probably the most two pivotal that I that I feel like. And uh, with, with that extra bonus point for Iowa State, I think it's uh, really even more concern for the Hawkeyes on this one. Here's the takedown here. Comes in on a single leg, does a great job of getting the angle, then he stops over. Is uh, Gallic overcommitted? Drop low and got the double leg, and me, Red. you get a guy that low with two legs tied up. Is right. cap rope? Here we go. Red's yeah, tight. he actually looked like a Three John Smith two. takedown or a Kale Sanderson takedown, where you just don't have many counters and there's yeah. no whizzers. Right to your butt. Searches comes on top. He deferred uh, the opportunity to choose, and go, so gentlemen. Gallic chose down. Still green. Gallic, a pretty good wrestler on the mat. Yeah, he's got a good. Got to get some riding time there, down. Uh, otherwise, he's Gallic's tough rider. Yeah, right now, 38 seconds of riding time here for Sertzis. Really, and probably important for his stock here to be able to get over at least a one-minute riding time, and now he's got the leg in. Hips well, are down on the mat, I think, though. Uh, Gallic put the leg Make in, right? Yeah, and uh, he's pretty, pretty potent here. Gallic perhaps looking for a reversal here more than an escape. There's your minute. If he gets uh, that leg out, he's going to be uh, able to able to escape. If he gets that leg out, he's reaching back, working hard on it. Search is approaching a minute in the second period that he has ridden. He's a uh, minute 15 advantage now, which is really big in this match, which he leads. Alex Search leads the Cyclone on the bottom. All right, two nice. to one. Search now has a two on one wrist ride, so that's very tough here to allow Search to go ahead and put that leg in a little bit deeper. He's getting his hips. Down and his head up. Very knowledgeable crowd. They, uh, the buzz arm. is going here. They know. That arm. That leg's coming out. That leg's coming out. Yeah. That leg's Searches. coming out. One point wisely escape. gives up the one point escape. Wisely gives up one there. A minute right, 49 a riding time advantage for Alex Sertzis. A good ride. He gives up the escape. The score's two to two on the scoreboard. 15 seconds left in the second period. Well, not much time left in this period, but it's really decision time for Sertzis. Yep, it's um, talking about the strength yeah, of uh, well, Nick what, Gallic on what top. He, right, yes. what he should would do here. Uh, this is going to be a really good call for uh, the bench to make or for Alex to make. He goes down. 
He, he, he didn't set. even look over to the bench. He is now, but he already had chosen down. Green, green down well, if he stays down on the mat, he's going to be in trouble. If he gets to his feet, I think he's going to be fine. So that's going to be the key. You're listening to Dan Gable, Jim Gibbons, I'm Tim Johnson bringing you the great interstate meet between Iowa State and Iowa. Four to three lead for Iowa State no and move. the team. No, no move on the bottom off the whistle. Yeah, but he's still pretty compact in here. That's why I like the position he's in. Certs is in down position here. He's still pretty compact and keeping able to the legs explode. out right now. Yeah, he's blocking out, but the riding time's ticking down. There's a committed uh, leg move right there. Put the leg in. Hey, he's got to make a movement. Yeah. And uh, he really hasn't made too many explosive movements. And the riding time is going to be raised here shortly. Well, he's gotten his arm behind his back. But see how he's got that set up? Yeah. Gallic, Iowa State wrestler. Now he's got the leg locked. He's very tough in this top position. Wow. He could come it. across here. Oh, he's got... He's got it tight. We're not going over the top. Oh boy, the referee might end up calling that anyway. Well, you've got to allow the wrestler a chance to turn his hips here. No more, the back no will follow. More. Right now, Zertz is doing a nice job keeping his hips flat, belly button to the mat. You just don't want to get him, you just don't want to. Uh... Gallic does not want to stop this match at this point. And that I was, knew a, he was gonna get a potentially a break dangerous. By the yeah. Two to two, and that is the score. There is no riding time advantage. Gallic cannot get two riding two. time. And Gallic cannot get riding time. Well, Sertz has obviously got the message. You can't stay down underneath here. If you're going to win this match, you got to get out from underneath. His fans are on he their feet. They want, he is explosive. And they want Sertz to get to his. This point in the match, both athletes are slick. They're a little bit loose. OK, there's a leg that comes in. Wow. I'll tell you, Gallic came around, did a great job of... Uh, Gallic's too high, yes. though. There's 30 seconds left. Plenty of time to be able to get out from Sertis underneath. Sertis is Sertis. behind it, Gallic's right leg. It depends on whether Gallic's behind the arms or not. If he's over the arm, he's in trouble. I think he's in trouble. Look up, but time could run out. Time could run out there. There's only 10 seconds. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, he hasn't got it yet. He hasn't got it yet. He hasn't got it yet. He had, didn't get it. He got it. He got, he got it. it. No. He got but, it. Yeah, he, he gave got it. it. He won. He won the match. Yeah, he, he won the match. He he did. Did. There was one second to go. He won the match. He won it. No, he won it. It was tight, but it was it looked like that was the correct call. It looked like it. Obviously, time, I didn't think he was going to get it out. I really didn't either, but I, I tell you what, time was tight. Right but hand. here's what he does. He gets up onto his feet, all right? Pops up out of there, created angle position. Right before that, he got up onto his feet and circled, shook, 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 and then popped it out. You got... That was obviously... Um, much need to win by the Hawkeyes, but uh, tough, tough match. Really, I, th I thought Gallic did a wonderful what job of holding on as long as he did. Yeah, he really did. But Sertis was just fantastic here coming out from the back door there, shaking him off. After three matches, Iowa goes ahead 6-4 to four with that last second win. Here's Metcalf it's coming out against Mueller. This is tight. Bottom leg cradle potentially there. Could have followed up with the Turk. He's got that bottom uh, leg he's slipping out. So, Mueller's a tough kid. He's, he's not going to go over easy. Brent Metcalf out of Davidson, Michigan, by way of Virginia Tech okay, with Tom Brands. And go. now back uh, into Iowa, where he won a national championship last year, was the Hodge Trophy as the most valuable wrestler in the nation. One red, America's red. best right now, Brent Metcalf, the 149-pounder up against Mitch Mueller who is from Iowa City, wrestling for Iowa State. He's ranked high. Two highly ranked wrestlers going at it. Quick takedown for Metcalf, puts him ahead two to one. Iowa out in front six to four after three matches. A last second victory for Surtis, Alex Surtis, over Nick Gallick for a three to two win.
And when I say last second, it was last second. Last half second, I think. There's another shot by Metcalf. I'm surprised he's penetrating this easily. Uh, I know he's, he's, he's had a tough time with Mueller in a couple of matches, but, but Metcalf seems to be um, improving on his skills and his techniques. Here's a nice sweep, elevates that leg right there at the edge of the mat. You know, obviously his setups are much better than what we saw last year. You know, a lot of times he would just pound through and just pound through a guy here, and his and setups caught, are much more get, clean. Get, and his, even his finishes, he get caught with his head down. Three great matches so far, guys. I mean, all six wrestlers have uh, fought to the end. It's been very, very close. Well, I don't, Just I, what we expected. I don't know where this is going here as far as the meat goes, but I tell you what. Slate. Two, I two. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Two great matches. Of course, Joe Slayton getting uh, major, but uh, 125, 141, very close. These are two very good teams. The way they're going out of here. Here's another potential pinning situation here with the. the uh, Three-quarter Nelson. I think they do that out in Michigan. He's a Michigan boy from high school. I think Severn and those boys used to get that head up there. You know, this weight class has kind of cleared out a little bit, quite a bit from uh, what it was last year. So it gives a guy like Mueller an opportunity to go up there and really do some damage for your team. And that's why he's ranked as high as he is. This is just tough duty catching uh, Metcalf at home. Anytime. Six to three. Three takedowns for Metcalf in the first period. Three escapes for Mueller. Mueller out of Iowa City. Boy, West nice high. Job. Wow, he, he wow. really cut the corner well. So, cut the corner well. He really did. He came off the inside by, uh, collar tie up there, and he just uh, saw Cale Sanderson do that quite a bit. Get the corner off that uh, inside collar Clean tie. Great there. technique. Clean Clean well, you were pretty good on your finishes. You usually skied him, but uh, you're pretty good at cutting that corner as well. You have to cut the corner if you're going to go ahead and they try to take that down. Yeah. Only one count, though. Metcalf getting back points. On, we're going to decide whether they were two or three. I, it should be two. Two points because the time ran out. You know, you don't have to count with your hand visually. You can count in your head. It can be the second. You know, it's nice to do it that way, but keep it cleaner. Down. Metcalf finishes off that first period with his takedown, which you're going to see. He just does a great job of cutting the corner. They're really excellent, you know, at dropping his level. Once he's penetrating the man, he's going ahead and getting out to the corner here. We call cutting at the corner, cutting the corner. And uh, a lot of his opponents really don't have much fight left when they get when he gets in on that leg. Right. Metcalf finished off the first period with two-point near fall, and so he's out in front 10-4 to four after the first period. Takes an alternative start, pushes Mueller away, gives him one, goes back to his feet. We're talking about Brent Metcalf out in front. Oh, 10 to 4. I think he, got hit him. I think he about knocked him out on that shot there. Hit his head. He's got to turn the head a little more with his knee. Otherwise, it's potentially dangerous. Mueller's a tough kid, but you know, he's he's having to take on a very, very tough kid. 12 to 4 in favor of. Brent Metcalf, the number one ranked, undefeated, defending NCAA champion for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And he does have that back point, so, you know, from a tech ball point of view, the difference between four and five points, too, that makes a big difference. But And that's the direction it looks like he's going. There's an escape for Mueller. Well, he's not getting much of a, Mueller's not getting too much of a shot. He's kind of like, looked like Joey a little bit, Slayton, when he was making that shot, just a little bit. Yeah. Better than that, though, but, because Joey was bouncing off the mat. But the difference in the two matches here is that Metcalf is basically going back up to the feet every time yep. that there's an opportunity to make Mueller look bad. In fact, Mueller's got some fight in there. He's taking some shots, but it's one and done. That one point was a technical violation because Metcalf's hand ended up inside the knee pad of Mueller, and basically it was accidental, but he, he was grabbing the knee pad, so they called it. it. So it's one more point, Mueller, and... Uh, you know, Metcalf just kind of frowned. He's seen it all. He's undone by nothing. Takedown two, 14 to six, 30 seconds left in the second period. Yeah, if, if he, he, should, he should be really releasing him again, kind of like what you were talking about right now. He still had the time, but because it's going to be uh, tough to uh, get that many takedowns in the uh, third period. Miller's no, no slouch at all, and he hasn't hit the wall yet either. No, he's still battling yeah. in there. That's. That's the difference. I mean, he's not flat on his belly. He's not flush either. I no. mean, it, it, you could tell that with Joe Slayton yeah. inside a minute. Yeah. Uh, he looked a different color. 
end of the second period. The score 14 to 6 in favor of Brent Metcalf for Iowa Hawkeyes at 149. Time. He's also got he's riding nine. time that cannot be um, overtaken, so he's actually up by nine. He's gonna it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take a huge effort to get a tech fall, but he's in a position. The Hawks over the Cyclones, six to four after three matches. We're in the fourth match of the night in this big history-making meet. We'll find the uh, uh, the attendance out soon to see if it's a new world record for college dual meets. It's had, Tim, I don't see any empty seats. I'm looking around any, here, and this is just a great environment. We're back to the center after uh, Mueller took a timeout. Metcalf underneath to start the third period. Nice job of getting his hips out here. One his head escape. Up. Makes the score 15 to 6. Good job of just swinging around here. He, he probably Two, take down. He won an escape. Two, take down. He keeps this up. He's going to get it. But he can't waste time right there. So that's a big, big difference. And he, he's not wasting too much. Yeah. He's just, just, Miller's just making his shots that, uh, that, like that. Uh, that was actually not such a good shot by Metcalf, but he did come a follow up move. Two, take down. Yeah. Called three takedowns in the last uh, 40 so, seconds. So he may end up uh, getting the tech ball if he keeps this up. 21 to nine, one escape for Mueller. Stalling on Mueller, warning stalling, takedown, Metcalf, two points. That might be it. Oh, one more. 23 to 10 right now. That's it right 25 there. to 10. Match is over. Match is over. Brent Metcalf, 149-pounder, puts five points on the board for the Hawkeyes. Five points on the board for the Hawkeyes. Technical fall. He had the back points. Wow. That's pretty good match for the four. Hawkeyes there. Such great condition. Just can go, go, go. Tech ball for Brent Metcalf makes the score Iowa 11, Iowa State 4. After the first four matches, we're approaching the halfway point, the fifth match of the night, 157, Tyler Sanderson. For the Hawkeyes, it's Matt Balwig, a sophomore. Tyler Sanderson, a junior. I think Balwig's a, a sophomore. Mm -hmm. Sanderson's in on him quickly and scoring. Sanderson, brother of Kale Sanderson, out of Hebert City, Utah. Able to get on that uh, low ankle pick. Looks just like his older brother there, just getting in and driving all the way through. Sanderson with the early takedown goes out 2 0 over Matt Balwig, who's a sophomore from Waverly, Iowa, Waverly Shell Rock High School. Riding that, uh, that ankle tough for that opposite side ride there. This is Ball League's probably first big match for Ball League in a Hawkeye uniform. He's had a few matches earlier in the season. Well, he came out of that great well Waverly Shell Rock program here that's just really got it on a roll. And uh, getting, getting controlled here pretty good. Heads down here, butts up, and just the yeah, ankles get, just uh, getting ridden. Sanderson gives Balwig a point for an escape. Makes Probably score a smart two to escape one. the way he's been controlling the match. Basically was able to get right in on that shot right away, and so you, you think that a few more of those are in the deck. He's got that little Sanderson shuffle. Kind of brought back some memories with Kale. I, I think the, the, he's, he's probably, of all the Sanderson brothers, the most, I mean, Kale was consistently offensive, but he just really commits on his shot. Kale was able to pick at you and go through, but sometimes that uh, Sanderson, just when he gets the hips, he just really drives through. It's fun to watch. You just got a shot there of Kale Sanderson, head coach of the Iowa State Cyclones, his brother Cody, assistant coach, sitting beside him, and now their brother out on the mat in the middle, Kyler Sanderson, the junior, the last of the Sanderson brothers. 
Nice shot to the left-hand side that time. Nice switches off to a double and two points. Yeah. Take Made down. it look easy. Made yep. it look easy. Score four to one. Minute left in the first period. Kyler Sanderson for the Cyclones out in front already has riding time as well. He's letting him go again. He's had his way pretty easy on the feet, and he's thinking, well, you know, I'm going to think about the team here a little bit, too. Of course, his coach is his older brother, and he better think about no the team. Movement. <laughs> Red elbow last and again, hold. Here we go. Red on. There's the takedown here. Again, left-handed high crotch. No. Stay in there. Come on. Stay in there. I think he's one of the few guys I've seen who can go high crotch left, high crotch right, no you know, and with, with power. Not, you know, some guys just duck to one side and then high crotch to the other, but he's got, he's got good... Power. I got one for you. I can tell you one that can do it. Who's that? Penrith. Brad Penrith could do it. Yeah. yeah. But it's well, rare. Coach, I know. It's Penrith. rare. Very rare. One well, escape for Bowleg, but Jim, you have been talking to me. I mean, your dad mo made you go left, right, uh, drills. I mean, it starts young, or it, it the muscle memory doesn't happen. Yeah, and, and most guys are just, you know, single leg to the right, high crotch to the left, you know. They, they, boy, just beautiful shot there. Again, left-handed. He was able to adjust and uh, got two more points. Scores six to two now, 15 seconds left in the first period. Well, it's the same move, but you're doing it from both sides, you know, and it's like uh, you got two moves. And you never know which way the guy's gonna lead, and obviously if you're good with the lead leg, it's, it helps. And so if whichever leg he leads, you're good with. And I thought that, you know, when I watched Kale Russell that uh, over the years that he did a great job of disguising hey guys, his lead leg. You know, he could shoot. Get a good start, okay? Here's the a drop, good start drive, here. coming through. Green down tight. Gets his head up. Red in, I'm working close. Here we go. We've really seen some good finishes in this match so far. At the end of the first period, Kyler Sanderson for the Cyclones out in front, six to two, a very dominating first period against Ballweg from Iowa. Ballwick says he, he will choose Dan. Well, he might as well, I think he yeah. end up letting him go. Matt Ballwick out of no Waverly Shell Rock High School, a sophomore, in the lineup for the Hawkeyes for the first time in his career um, on a regular basis. Ryan Morningstar moved up to 165. Oh, we'll see him. Here's another takedown attempt for Kyler Sanderson. It's or two. a reversal. Or no, takedown. No, yeah. take yeah. Got the escape. Takedown makes the score eight to three. He's really clearing the arms, getting by the arms, and there's no defense there. And, you know, when guy gets by your arms, that's usually all legs, unless you got your head there. And that's why you do a drill called the down blocking drill. And obviously, he's getting by the down blocking. He's getting by the arms. Nothing but legs. And it's pretty easy to uh, finish when you're a guy that's used to it. And when you talk about down blocking, we saw a great example of that with Metcalf here, where, where, where it looked like Mueller got his bell rung a little bit. He just pushed everything down, and his hips came down, and his feet were exploding backwards. So not much of a reaction for, for Ballwig once uh, Sanderson gets in there. Definitely, he's got to lower his head position. That's that's real key. And he's, he's he's waiting. Legs clean. Keep legs clean. All right. He hooks the bottom leg, gets the two-point two takedown. Yeah, he's got that <laughs> got that finish down really well. Clean up the backside. Ten to four. Sanderson, a lot of riding time advantage. A lot of time left in the first period or second period. Forty-nine seconds. Same way. All right, Ballwig. I think you're going to see. He's still down. I tight. think you're going to see Sanderson come out in the front here and work front Ready? headlock. Red, take hold. I think Ballwig needs to uh, think more about offense a no. little bit. Maybe uh, you know, try to set hey, something up guys. when he gets That's on his feet one. instead of hey. just trying to keep Elbow him getting blast. taken down because Lock. he's not doing a good Ready? job. Coming I'm looking at the communication here between wrestler and coach, brother and brother here, and he come right up on the. See, he's got the head and arm tied up right now. He's looking for back points. Definitely think of back points in this situation. Maybe try to suck Ballwig back and then, then lock a leg in after that. Right. Ballwig did a nice job of hand fighting there. One point escape, 10 to 5, 30 seconds left in the second period. The thing that's interesting, even though the score is your offense, Dan. And Ballwick. you need to finish, though. You need to finish because that would put you back in the match somewhat. But he did, he, he's hanging on. He didn't have that. Uh, Look at this. He's got a cradle locked up. Yeah, he's losing it. Yep. Yeah, Ballwig let go of that wisely. Yeah, Ballwig did a good job Ballwick, of uh, the difference, stretching out. The difference when he got in that ankle, though, he was he got in, he stopped for a second, and he didn't react to Sanderson's move. And so Sanderson got a very good position on him at, on, the, on the side. Two points there for that takedown for Sanderson. Makes the score 12 to 5 at the end of the uh, second period. So we're going to third period. 12-5, lots of riding time. Where are we going? 
Down. Red says down. We need a good start, guys. Red down. So it's actually 13 to 5. We don't need any more. Lock That's a major. No movement. Green. Four pointer. The question. Cover elbow last and he not only has to. Here we go. Red in. Well, if he gets uh, ended like that. Ball, this this position he's pretty strong in. He's a pretty good rider, and I was surprised he didn't stay with it. I'm surprised too. I mean, one point escape. It's a confidence factor, you know. Yeah, it is. And he just he just backed out of that, and he's kind of thinking, I'm not going to get give up the big move here. But in the meantime, he, he, he did react there a little bit. Not there though. Up, oh, cut off. Two more points. Take down. We're getting schooled. Iowa's getting schooled there on that um, defense. Sanderson's thinking back points, you can tell, but uh, clock running here. Not. Come on, gentlemen. Let's get some encouragement from the bench, but I think they're thinking back points. We need another good start. Now they're going to go freestyle start. Tight green, no movement. Red optional start. 15-5, minute 19 left in the. Third and final period. Kyler Sanderson now 15-6. In on the single, cuts off for the double, two points. Doing what Metcalf did to Mueller, two more points. Looks like a replay here in the last. Uh, except there's no back points. Except there's no back points, and that's what they're talking about here from the sidelines. You gotta have back points. That's a difference of a one point, yep. one team point. Okay, option will start. You gotta give him space. And he's gotta get it before go. he gets 15 points ahead. I mean, he's got to get the back points first now. I mean, it's kind of like 19 to 8. Now, right here, Sanderson is thinking, how can I turn him to his back? Right, right. Head's in there, head's in there. Ballwick, if he can hold on to this here, can milk uh -huh. a little bit more clock. That's really all that's, that's happening. Got the head and arm tied up. There's two, there's two. Two points one takedown, two. one escape. 21 to nine. Green stall, green. Green. That's the first stall warning. Ballwig uh, from Iowa green warned for stalling. There's been so much action and so many quick finishes on this. That's the first stall warning. And normally you don't see that in a 21 to, actually 22 with riding time, 22 to nine match. So Sanderson looking to get the, uh, Match termination with another takedown. Just style points at this point. That was the first time he actually kept his head equal with yeah. Sanderson's and he wasn't able to penetrate. That's what I call that down blocking. Well, there's that last 15 seconds is something to build on right there for Ballwood, but that match was all Sanderson. 22 to nine with riding time advantage. Gives the Cyclones four points. Tightens the, the meat, 11 to eight in uh, favor of Iowa after five there will matches. Be a 12 minute intermission, 12 minute intermission. After five matches, the score is Iowa 11 and Iowa State eight. We'll be back with more college wrestling in just a moment. back at Carver Hawkeye Arena, the great rivalry between Iowa State and Iowa. Iowa leads 11 to eight after five matches. And uh, we'll take a little bit of a uh, look at the highlights from the uh, first uh, five. And uh, um, we talked about it earlier. And, and um, right here, we're taking a look at uh, 125. One Charlie Falk here. That was probably the big move in the match here. Came on a single leg, come up to the bear hug. And Clark did a nice job of fighting back into the match, but it was pretty much Falk late. And then this is the big match here that, you know, the big decision to bring Zoe Slayton out here. And it was uh, one and done as far as takedowns go, and it became all Fanthorpe, and not the guy we're accustomed to seeing at 33. Then the big match here, see time running down here, right at the one second mark, two point reversal. Not much question there. And you've got Brent Metcalf here just scoring at will. He's able to get back points with loud, uh, Tech ball situation, five team points, more of the same. 
And then at 157, Kyler Sanderson does the job and uh, brings Whoop. the Cyclones back up to an 11-8 uh, score. Look like a lot like Betcast match, but no back points. Four points for the Cyclones there, brought them from 11 to four to 11 to eight. We talk about surprises, a couple of surprises. Um, what's the biggest surprise in the first five uh, matches for you? Well, I, I, I think the uh, surprise obviously is at 133, right? Where the Iowa State bench did not go for the throat. You know, basically trying to, you got a guy who's down there and got a situation where you could get an extra team point. You already had the back points and let the match flow out there and, and uh, that'd be pretty big here as far as that goes. And we saw where at 149, it did happen. Yeah. You know, I um, agree with you the same way, class, but I, I agree, I agree different. I agree different on, on your, on uh, Slayton. Well, after five matches, the score is Iowa 11 and Iowa State 8. We'll be back with the start of the second half in just a moment. We're back at Carver Ho Hawkeye Arena. The Cyclones trail the Hawkeyes 11 to 8. And um, tonight's attendance, there you have it, an all-time world record for collegiate dual meet, 15,955. Well, we broke it by two, three hundred, so, you know, that's not bad. I was getting nervous, but uh, we're now Carver Hawkeye owns that, uh, that wrestling record. Big show here. Where were the 45 other people we could have fit into here? <laughs> for 16,000 <000 laughs> even. Yeah, got to leave a little room yeah, for yeah. another time. Yeah. Yeah. We're ready for 165 pounds for Iowa State. The sophomore, John Reeder, he's 8-0. He's ranked third. For the Hawkeyes, Ryan Morningstar, a junior. He's 8-0. He's ranked ninth. This is the match that I, uh, along with 141, that I felt like were the big matches. Even though all of them are big, these two, I think, are swing matches. The Hawkeyes won the 141. I was really interested to see Ryan Morningstar. You know, he spent a lot of time at the 157-pound weight class, and... He looks bigger this year and, and filling out in that weight real nice here just from first glance. Well, they have not wrestled because Ryan Morningstar up from 157. John Reeder was at 165 last year, an All-American, returning All-American. Only a sophomore. Also out of Davison, Michigan. Same as Metcalf, right? Same as Metcalf, they're teammates. I think uh, Nebraska's kid, Don, well, he transferred to Donahoe. He right, from Davison. Houston, Davison. And I think there's another one from Indiana. I think Trevor Perry, maybe. Powerhouse high school program in Michigan. And these two guys are going at it here ear to ear. A little tough to get through that head hands defense like that. Both wrestlers like to go, you know, get on the attack. Morningstar, I think, really good. Probably the best Iowa wrestler from attacking from the, the from the knee down here. He likes to go to that low single leg shot. Ryan Morningstar not uh, unfamiliar with winning big matches here um, against Iowa State as a freshman. He upset Iowa State's Paulson, the eventual national champion that year. So redshirt freshman uh, beating an eventual national champion. Those are the things that happen here in this have happened here in this duel over the years. Little surprised he's getting there in their ear to ear so much because he, he he has a motion from the outside too to set up some uh, swing shots and some low shots. Morning star. Yes. But you know, Reader seems to be getting that tough collar tie. Yeah, he doesn't mind being in there. He likes to battle. There's a half shot there by Morning Star. Into a new wrestling position here now with the over and under. Almost two minutes gone in the first period. The score is still 0-0. Zero, zero. Very, very subtle change there where, where Morningstar was able to stuff Reader's head down. Now he's got a scoring opportunity potentially. Moves into a front headlock, hand fighting. Both guys having a difficult time getting to the corner and, and, and really haven't attempted that at this point, just trying to lower their level. Here's an attempt by Reader. He bounced off him pretty good. Yeah. Here's a situation where Reeder does have the advantage. Inside collar tie and the wrist. and feel comfortable with it. If Morningstar 
seems to be getting caught up in uh, positions that uh, he normally isn't in, I don't believe. I think he bobs around, weaves around a little more. I th I That's probably why he's having a difficult time you know, doing any penetrating. Right now, Reeder's really hanging on his head. I mean, he's really making Morningstar work, and Reeder likes being in this position ear to ear. He really makes his opponents work. That's the end of the first period. There was no score, 0-0. Zero, zero. You're just joining us. The score is Iowa 11, Iowa State 8 after five matches. This is the sixth match, 165 pounds. Ryan Morningstar, you're looking at him right there. He's coming on top of John Reeder, the returning All-American sophomore for Iowa State. Scores 0-0 zero, zero right now as we enter the second period. Iowa State wrestler just coming up with that heavyweight stand-up again, and Morningstar fairly easy to stop that by just dropping in on the leg and sweeping it. Roll through situation. Good hip action by Reeder. Yeah, this he's pretty tough in here. Morningstar has obviously got a pretty good grip on that leg. He's got his hips in. It looks like a re repeat of uh, Clark and... Yeah, only the, 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 the singlets have changed. Yep. And, and, the, and we had the... Back then, the 125-pound match, the official really took a long time to call a stalemate. And we'll he's see doing what the same thing. Well, yeah, not quite as long, but a uh, little shorter. Yeah. He's warmed up. Well, that worked to uh, Ryan Morningstar's advantage. 39 seconds of uh, riding time maybe, build up. Maybe, depending on how much strength it took out of you there. He had to pull it up. Caution on top. Ryan Morningstar jumped the gun. Now, he's dangerous here. Reader is dangerous. Yeah, he's got the leg in. Morningstar does. He's getting a little bit high. I think Reader. Doing exactly what you're talking about here. Coming out the back door. He's wow, that was pretty uh, pretty good by Morningstar to uh, keep from getting reversed there. Potentially dangerous. They're going to put Ryan Morningstar nice. back on top. Yeah. No points. I think Morningstar learned a lesson there. We'll see if he does it again, though. Maybe not. Put his leg in, and he just didn't realize how dangerous this guy was. Well, Reader, that, Reader was is really smooth with some legs on top and on the bottom. Well, that's why he just comes up with his butt. He just comes, brings his butt up. He invites that leg to come in, Dan, because he wants to get that reversal. He wants to roll through here. All right now, you got to now it's game on here, and it's the guy who keeps his head up in this scramble position right. who will end up winning it. And I think Morningstar's got that leg, leg locked cross, pretty so tight, so we're yeah. just burning clock here. Right, he's going to break it. Still 0-0, Morningstar building a minute 22 riding time advantage here in the second period. Green. I want that green. He's been green. cautioned on top, so he's got to be a little careful. Morningstar jumping that gun. You get two cautions, the third one's a point. Ryan Morningstar from Lisbon, Iowa. His dad, Scott, a four-time state champion. Ryan himself, a three-time state champion. Ryan. Storied program right up the road here from Iowa City. Ryan's doing a nice job of just basically hanging on in there in the... the uh, well, he's really out of position, but uh, not really stalling. He just can't do anything. Can't really do anything there. It's hard to call a guy stalling when you're, if you let go, the guy's out. Five seconds left. Ryan Moore, from Ryan Morningstar riding out John Reeder in this second period. He, he maybe rode him out, but uh, he's used a lot of energy. Exactly what he wants to do, though, here is good period for Morningstar. However, he got here, two minutes of riding time. Now, you got to remember, uh, Reeder pinned 54 guys yeah, in high school in a row. This is his strength. And probably uh, uh, one of Morningstar's, he, he, does, he doesn't have many weaknesses, but... Uh, that, that's two. That's two cautions on Morningstar. He moved his elbow before the whistle was blown. That's his second. One more movement, and that evens up that, all that right. Stay tight. I'm working a little close. Okay, green, red on. Now that's red. You bounced him. Well, we don't like this going back and forth because, you know, points like this are pretty... Tough they're to come not, by. Well, they're, hey, they're cheap points, away. but, you know, it's part of the game. <laughs> People yeah. have lost national titles by, by jumping the gun. We're starting the third period. The score is 0-0 zero, zero on the score. They went the wrong way with the riding time. So they're going to have to straighten that out. 
Big escape by Morningstar there. It looked like in front, 1-0. As, as tough as Reeder is in the top position, he didn't look like he uh, uh, really wanted to be there through the course of the match. So I don't think he wants to take a chance. He wants to get out there and wrestle a little bit. Doesn't want the clock run out on him. He is making shots that are he's bouncing backwards. Uh, he's hitting and bouncing backwards instead of hitting and going forward. Uh, he's going to have to get an ankle. They're going to figure out the riding time here, and it should be about, about two um, or three more seconds, yeah, four seconds. Maybe four seconds more. Down. Down. I noticed both of these wrestlers actually ran back to the center. I mean, I noticed John Reeder did. So did Ryan Morningstar. They both are uh, ready to go, ready to rumble. And uh, we're in the third period, a minute 20 left. The score is 1-0 in favor of Morningstar. Annie also has riding time, and what was that? What was that about there? We're basically concerned about uh, Reader moving forward here with his head, head button or something. Yeah. Well, Morningstar, there's only one way to win this match for him. He's got to get a takedown. There's only one way for Reader to win the match. He's pretty much got to get a takedown too, because. You just, it's too tight right now to count on anything but your own skills. Well, if you're Ryan Morningstar, you got to keep your feet moving, and particularly that left foot, because that's where Reader's going here. He's, most of the shots have been to that side of that lead leg. He's not moving it right now, but he's got the tie up he he's wants. He's reacting, and that's about it. There's well, a, there's I knew that call was coming. That's a warning stalling with 39 seconds. 39 seconds it's hard left. To, it's going to be hard to call it because he's going to get down to 15. That doesn't mean you can't call it. But there's really, it's just Matt position here. It's just Matt position. Yep. If he makes a bad shot, you know, he's in trouble too, so. Well, he's, he's not gonna make a shot right here. Well, he's gonna wait for Reeder to go ahead and break through his defense, which and, Reeder can't do. And Reeder's, Reeder's having a difficult time really uh, penetrating right here. He's, he's, really, he's really having a difficult time. And he, uh, he doesn't deserve a stall call, I can tell you that right now. Morning star, so Matt is getting down towards the end here. And Rita really isn't setting up any any offense. No, he didn't go through the. He didn't set up any offense. The heads and arm, just like you talked about. Nope. Well, big uh, win again for Ryan Morningstar in front of the home crowd, the record crowd. Ryan Morningstar wins 2-0 with riding time. It put the Hawkeyes up 14 to eight after six matches. This is a way. Ryan Morningstar looks like he belongs in. I tell you, he looks like a good size. He kept, he's flushed all the way. And I know there's some tight calls there in the second period, maybe giving up a potential reversal on the he, potentially he, he held up well, but he held up very well. He, he yes. came right there in the end. He was still yeah. strong. Yeah. He stepped yeah. right up with very him. Physical. You know? yep. Well, that puts uh, Cyclones behind the eight ball because the next four are definitely their favorites. The next two are favored for Iowa. The, next, the last two are favored for Iowa State. Right now, Iowa leads by six. Iowa State's got to change one of those uh, next two matches of favorites here. We start at 174 pounds. Duke Burke, the junior, 2-0, ranked eighth, going up against Jay Borschel, the junior, 8-0, ranked second. This is the first time I've watched Burke wrestle. Do we know anything about it? Transfer from Northern Illinois. He was... Uh, Ended up in the round of 12 last year, which They're, is one win away from being an All-American. These two wrestled last year, too. And um, the Borschel major decision, Burke, 10 to 1 at the Midlands. So they've seen each other, and Borschel's had it his way. And he started out that way, too. That's Pretty easy, too. Because he knew where he was. He kept the foot in, had the toe right in bounds. Two points real fast for Jay Borschel. Elbow last and hold it. Okay, here we go. Red tight, green at you. You know, we've re seen very few, you know, those face to shoelace type scrambles that tend end up taking a minute, minute and a half, or these a lot of very clean uh, technique once these wrestlers get in on the legs here. That's, that's good coaching, that's uh, you know, good style, and those, those finishes only take two to three seconds, and uh, it tells you the quality of wrestlers that we have out here today. Borschel, a junior from Marion, Iowa, Lynn Marr High School. He's also left the state and go to Virginia Tech when Tom Brands was out there, came back. All-American last year in his first year in the lineup at 174 for the Hawkeyes. Lynn Marr High School. 
Coach uh, Doug Stryker, former uh, All-American here for the Hawkeyes. Break. Red in there, red down. Hold on, fellas, give me a second here, hold on. <coughs> All right, let's try this. Go, red go. in there, let's go. Burke from Notre Dame High School in Peoria, red Illinois. Down. Started at Northern Green. Illinois, Green. transferred here. Green, elbow to last. Iowa, or to Iowa State. Set. Ready, green on. Horse has always been really tough in the top position. Does a nice job of controlling the hips. Drops back we in got and room. We got room. controlling the hips. Keep working. Always been pretty good at that. Had an opportunity to watch him through his career at Linmar Marion. And what amazed me about him was that he went from uh, 103 pounds to 171, I think, yep, in, four in four years. Four years. And so he won the state four times. And you very, I've never heard of that from going to 103 and all the way up to winning at 171. And yeah, being a four time state champ, just amazing. And uh, it, he, he looks bigger this year, you know, out there. Hey, we're going to hold it, okay? Get in there. Probably could hold up pretty well at 184. Well, I've actually been around longer than you guys, so I've heard of it before, but. But uh, I think it was Don Jr. Buzzard. Uh, I think he wrestled 120. No, and won four state titles. Oh no, no. That's no. no that's I what I'm talking. Weight class. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. To win four state titles, I've I've never heard of it. To go he, jump that far. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he. Uh, I think he was 120 and ended up like 189 his senior year. Uh, a little bit. This is a little bit like what you're talking about earlier. Where do you come to point in time where you? You think uh, you're not going to score them back Guys, points right away. You're going to get some more takedowns. So. Right got, uh, just on cue here, Borschel goes into the uh, okay, optional start. Red in, green. I think he heard you. Well, I was thinking that you were talking. Red oh, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Two to one in favor of Borschel. Now he gives Burke the escape here at 174 pounds. Big meet between Iowa State and Iowa. Carver Hawkeye setting a World record for college dual meet uh, attendance, 15,995. Never before have this many seen and viewed a college wrestling meet. Borschel's just smooth out there. Again, he had an opportunity to break the grip. The grip was broken. Didn't quite spin around, but there he's in a position. Yeah, missed it. Missed it. Look at this. Come back. Good I don't know how he did that. You know, he just got that knack. He's just smooth. Good hips. But he, but, he, but he knows when to lower his hips and drive through the man. Exactly. And that's, that's what he did. It looked like he just fell off down. Yeah, and there was a, a chance where a lot of younger wrestlers will throw their rear end out and try to get out of that. He dropped and drive. Dro yeah. It was hard to see it from this angle. Here we go. Okay, Good spin down. around situation. Both athletes reacting lively here, but spin around. Caught drop, him on his heels and drop and drive. Lower those hips. Okay, set. Hey, elbow last and hold. Hey, elbow last and hold. Take hold. Beginning in the second period. Borschel from Iowa, out front four to one. Two takedowns in the first period Jay Borschel had. One neutral, three. Duke Burke. Escape for Borschel. The Hawkeye also has a lot of riding time. Minute 40 built up. Get on the leg again, but kind of a he's squashed on that one though. Uh, be hard to come out of that one. Just keeps on moving in when he has the opportunity. Wasting a lot of time here though. Both sides actually. Yeah, this is a scoring opportunity for both men, and we'll see uh, much action there to come back up to the feet. An attempt the there by Iowa State's Burke. Spin around, came back in on the leg. Again, Borschel just does, never gets flustered out there. He just keeps the same expression, almost the same, exp the same pace all the way through the match. Keep improving it. This is not it's kind of a not a scoring position really for his opponent. Mike Haggerty, the official, puts them both back up. Stalemate. Real important 35 seconds for both both teams here. 
One's thinking about a major, and the other's got to be thinking about getting back in the match. Well, at this point in the match, I mean, you, what do you drill? Your go-to shot. You know, sometimes you have, you have to wait till the end of the match to hit it, but this is a go-to shot situation, and what is it? And, and really for both re both wrestlers, too, yeah, um, for, for what they're trying to accomplish. If you're gonna if you're gonna win this match, you need to score here if you're Burke. Yeah, and, and Burke had double inside tie there and didn't go to anything. And we're at the end of the second period. It is five to one in favor of Jay Borschel. Got both his takedowns in the first period, got an escape in the second period, nothing mu much more. Now Burke goes Reggie down. down. Okay, here we go. Lock down another good it would have been a different Green, match if right Burke would have been able to score there in the last 35 seconds Brady, as Dan Brady, pushed, uh, um, alluded to, and then to have the bottom position. Five to one, though, is uh, Borschel's uh, lead as we enter the third period. Borschel looking for, looks like he's looking for some back points. Good old fashioned head lever right there. Put your forehead in the back of his, uh, back of his arm, grab the wrist. Burke's doing a really good job of keeping his left arm out of position for a chicken wing or an arm bar. When he's getting in there, he's pulling it under. Come on, guys. A smothering ride by Jay Borschel, who's out in front five to one. He's got riding time. It can't be erased. So he's got a five-point lead right now. Content, it looks like, with riding. Burke out. Here's another one of these uh, that he's dominating the match, but it's not going to get a major. And what tactics do you use to get one? You, right now, it's probably you need to go. go for a back point. Warning stalling on the Iowa State wrestler. Burke. That's the first warning. No points. 30 seconds left in the match. A three point near fall would allow Go that um, major to happen. But I think Burke knows that. Hey, You're not going to see. Yeah, he'll take like, another stalling. Yeah, he'll take right Not middle. much of an effort Elbow to get out and, and uh, optional. Uh, optional start. Ready, take hold. Five to one in favor of Jay Borschel, who one just neutral. lets Burke uh, go. Now it's five to two. Burke back in on a shot. Great defense by Borschel. Looking to try to put him on his back, but Duke, uh, uh, Duke Burke felt that too. So he hung his leg out by his head too long, nothing. so the guy was able to reach nothing. up because he was definitely in position to get the takedown early. Still nothing. Keep that head, you keep that leg by the guy's head. That's where these guys that scramble real good, they're going to keep you from uh, scoring. That leg has to be with your body. And he leaves his legs behind him a lot. It costs him there in a takedown. Most of the scoring in the first period when the two takedowns were uh, achieved by Jay Borjo. You're looking at him right there. Four-time state champ from Linmar High School. The pride of Linmar comes off the All-American last year. Now a winner tonight against Iowa State. Gives three more points for Iowa. The score is the Hawkeyes 17, the Cyclones 8. Now we head to 184 pounds. Freshman Jerome Ward for the Cyclones up against junior Phil Ketty. Phil Ketty, All-American, ranked third in the nation right now. Jerome Ward being the freshman not ranked. 84, really a tough weight class. And and uh, you take a look at uh, Keddie's improvement over last year. He just really came on in the back half of the season. Just started, you know, getting tougher and just competing and competing. And, you know, he's in the quarterfinals of the national tournament last year. And he's got a lead against the national champion. He was that close to uh, beating the national champion in the quarters and lost it on a takedown with about 20 seconds, actually with about 10 seconds left. Yeah, and if you watch that, uh, he actually did hip heist up out of that. They gave the takedown on the landing, and that, you can do that on the edge. But he went. His season went from probably, you know, ended up being a, a, a low place All American. The season went from being a, not an All American to being competitive with the NCAA champions, and and uh, and to being in the All Star meet this year in exactly. preseason. I mean, his improvement has been steady and winning. Yeah. 
and beating a guy that had beat him 5-0 two years ago. So exactly what you're saying. So now he's got an opportunity. He's never won in a match in this Iowa State duel. He had to go against Varner. Jake Varner, two-time NCAA finalist, is up at 197. We'll see him in the next match, but uh, Phil Ketty gets a chance to not have to wrestle Jake. Um, and uh, go up against a freshman, make his mark here in this uh, historic and always exciting showdown between Iowa State and Iowa. We're here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. I'm Tim Johnson along with Jim Gibbons and Dan Gable. Bringing you the showdown between the number one and two ranked teams in America. Iowa number one ranked out in front 17 to eight over the number two ranked Cyclones. We're at 184 pounds. And, and this is where it'll be a little bit different for Phil Ketty here in this season. Now he's the top higher rated wrestler and you've got wrestlers that are going out just basically like Ward, Ward is doing here, holding good position, keeping it close. Kind of doing what he had to do his freshman and sophomore year to get competitive. And now you really have to try to break through a guy's head hands defense and Ward's keeping pretty good position. Right, he's having trouble. Yeah. Uh, Teddy is having trouble with ties, I can see. Usually he has a little stronger tie than his opponent. And so far in this match, uh, he's had difficulty with uh, getting control. Ward was a two-time state champion in Illinois from Evergreen Park at St. Rita High School. Redshirt freshman. Ward pretty well schooled here coming inside of uh, Ketty's tie. See, each, each time Ward comes to the inside, has an opportunity to drive through. Here's where Ketty's strong here. When he gets the underhook with that left arm, that's where he really gets confident and drives through. So good period for Ward. Going neutral on the feet. Into the first period, another 0-0 first period. Your call, buddy. Defers over Green. Ward uh, Green defers and um, Iowa. Ketty chooses down, down to start the second period. In You're looking middle, at him, Phil Ketty. Ready. Out of Vernal, Utah. Nice job. Wow. Whoa. Good speed action there. Ketty comes out for the escape. He goes up 1-0. One I like point to see for that. The escape. I like to see that, Tim, when you get a guy that just blows up out there and gets right up to his feet. He's up to his feet by the time he gets to the, uh, the middle part of that black circle. Drives all the way through, and that's it's tough to stop. He's really, Ward's really keeping the head position on him. Yeah. Which I don't think Ketty's used to. Came right up to his feet, kicks out, keeps moving. Ready. Ward's keeping his head right in there, and he's not moving his head out of the way. Well, if you notice, Dan, he's just coming inside of Ketty's tie every right. time. Yeah, he's, he's got the... He, Ketty's on the outside on the tie, so he needs, you know, if he needs to uh, get to the inside, that would help a little bit, but... Ketty reaches. See, see how people Ward comes underneath. But it's, it's one thing to be able to keep Ketty from getting into you, and it's another thing for getting into Ketty. So he's <laughs> got to do a whole lot more because I think Ketty can hold his own against this style any time of the day. No doubt about he's just so tough. It's, except Ward does have a good double leg, which he shot one time earlier, which, you know, uh, he, you know, if you're not ready, he could catch you off guard there, so. There, there hasn't really been a lot of moves, except for just a lot of. Whoa, nice. That was the first move in the match. Single leg, whoa, wow. nice so athletic the, move yeah. by Ward. But it's the first time that Ketty was able to get on yep. the inside. Well, once he got on right. the inside, he got to his shot. Well, he showed what he could do there. Yeah. I think both wrestlers showed what they could do there. Yep. That was a good flurry. 0-0, zero, zero, or 1-0 on seven. the escape by Ketty. Ward will have his chance. Warning for stalling on Iowa State's Ward. I think it's mostly the head barrier, and just a little bit of inactivity as compared to uh, Ketty's doing a little more moving with a head like that. Jerome Ward, just a tough guy to get off of his feet. Then in the second period, 1-0 in favor of Philip Ketty, the Hawkeye, over Jerome Ward for the Cyclones. But Ward goes down for the first time. Just to have a sense that he might have a little bit of explosion himself. We'll certainly find out here. 
came not up. like Geddes. Well, he came up with uh, his butt a little bit. And uh, all Posted. Iowa State wrestlers have been doing that. They come up with their rear end first, and then now they're in a situation where you're hand fighting here and really conceded the hips. One point escape. Keddy gives it up when he sees that he was in danger of actually being reversed. From a switch. Now here's where that 15,000 uh, 955 ended up uh, really having an impact. Period three. This match has gone quick. Really has. I can't remember much of it. He caught him, caught him off his own moves. Shot a low double, whipped him to his butt, and he kind of lost track of where he was at, and he kind of gave it up. Took he away. Needed, if he'd have kicked out, like he scrambled for it, but he was just kind of he looks stunned. Bit lost. Yeah. He looks stunned, and it's because Keddy stopped him in his tracks. It was a great defense turned to offense by Keddy. Well, that's that's strategy-wise. You're sitting there, you get that first stall-in call on the guy, and you're marching him back. Hey. You know he's got to come. You know he's got to come with his best shot. Especially when you got a warning. Yep, you get that warning and and, and uh, be aware that you've got an opportunity for some short offense when uh, Ward takes the shot. It still this comes down strategy. to a takedown for uh, Ward who's win it for Iowa State. Does he know where he's at? Keddy does. He's up three to two. Well, if he's thinking, I'm not sure. You know, he's got to be thinking scoring again. He can stay in a good position at the same time, but. Double leg shot, he's got an opportunity. He got, he's, he's, Got in there and stopped. And this is a scoring position for Keddy. Locks up the cradle potentially, but 15 lost seconds that, lost left that grip the match. There. Lost that grip. I don't know about you, Dan, but Ward showed me some athletic ability out here. He's, he's yeah. been very. He's presented himself. Spent most of the match in the center. Yes, Keddy was Keddy, and yeah. he wins three to two. And he gets his first win, as you talked about, Jim, in this big series. Well, maybe not the way he would have liked it, but uh, he goes forward all the time. He's got a lot of guts. He's able to stop him here. Just spin right around behind him and get the two, and that was the difference in the match. Yes, folks, that makes the score up. Iowa 20, and Iowa State 8. We'll be back with more college wrestling in just a moment. We're back at Carver Hawkeye Arena. The score is Iowa 20, Iowa State 8. We have two matches left, and here's where we stand. Two pins. Iowa State's favored in these two matches. Two pins, and the meat would be tied. But, Dan, you mentioned it. You get a, got, got to get one pin first. This is a guy that can do it. Jake Varner for Iowa State. Oh, and he'll be wrestling a uh, stand-in for their regular Chad Beatty, Luke Lofthouse for Iowa. Jake Varner is the type of guy that's really good in the top position. No matter if he gets out early and gets that to escape, you know, it's kind of like what we saw with the Keddy match. Ooh. Takedown, two Take for Varner. Uh, that gets good power half Nelson and Lofthouse is coming up. Varner Jr. from Bakersfield, California, Bakersfield High School. As a freshman and a sophomore, he's been second in the NCAAs. A finalist the last two years at 184, just moving up to 197 this year. And last year, Tim at the national Red. finals, he's probably about six seconds of riding time away from being the champion. Here's the replay on it here. Lofthouse coming up with another hook. I like that. I like those double overhooks. You see that overhook and lift. And he did that pretty easy. Yeah, he did. He uh, forced him over there pretty easy. Lofthouse is sophomore from Avon, Utah. Mountain Crest High School. He you know, went on a mission for a couple years. And he's uh, registered last year. And really, this is his first time in the, in the big show with that singlet on. Uh, for a long time, actually. He was here as freshman and wrestled 174 and had a lot of matches there. But uh, it's been a while. 2-0, the takedown, early takedown for Jake Varner over Luke Lofthouse. The score is Iowa 20, Iowa State 8. 
But you get six points for a fall, and if Iowa State can get two falls, it'll be 20 to 20, and that's the way it stands these days. There's no criteria in regular dual meet action. It's a, if it's a tie, it's a tie. He's, he's really controlling the wrist and ankle, and now the hips. What he wants to get, Coach, is he usually likes to get up uh, high on that head to get a good half Nelson with that. And really works the head, but this time he's going with the elbow and uh, maybe looking for a far side cradle. He's got that cradle. No, nope, not quite. Trying to get the point of the shoulder down, the left shoulder of Lofthouse down. He gets that left shoulder down and he's got a t chance to turn him, so he's really working that hard. He really put a, with Jake Varner on top here, really Shoulders put on a down. show against um, Hudson Taylor from Maryland in the uh, uh, All-Star uh, meet, um, turning him, um, tilting him, and winning by um, double digits. And it just looked like the Jake Varner that we thought we were going to see a couple of years ago, but it seemed like he kind of shut it down and made everything close the last couple of years, but he certainly has it in his arsenal to, uh, to open it up and score a lot of points. Lofthouse is doing an okay job of hand fighting down there. Barner's very tough in this position. He's got that shoulder pulled down again, and, and he's, he's slipping out of it there with his left arm. You see, Barner's gone to it maybe about 10, 12 times. Now, see how he hand peels that off there? That's gonna, he's gonna lose that technique. Barner's gonna lose the technique here because of the hand fighting down there by Lofthouse. And it's only going to be 2-0, lots of riding time. Um, the, the takedown happened when inside the first 15 seconds for Jake Varner. He rides Lofthouse out, and it's 2-0 after the first period. Talk to me. Lofthouse will get the choice. Red. He defers. Jake Varner says, down. I'll take down. They locked down for me tight, Red. No Boy, really difficult to, you, uh, you know, to pin it. Elbow last and hold it. Here we Scholarship go. college wrestler, you know, when, when he knows that uh, he's, he's, what he's got to do for his team to stay off get his back. There. Get it on there. Come on. Ready. Red in. Try it again. Get tight. Escape for Jake Varner. 3-0 for Varner over Lofthouse. 28 for Iowa over Iowa State after eight matches. Really nice takedown. Just a nice ankle pick. Two more for Jake Varner, makes the score 5-0. Again, here's the battle again. He's got that elbow tied, and then Lofthouse is going to probably peel this off again. See the right arm there trying to Don't peel that grip off. Maybe take a look at what we know what Lofthouse is doing there. He's peeling it off, but uh, Varner probably needs to be a little more active with his legs and get great, you know, bounce him up and down, get him moving. I don't think there's any doubt in Jake Varner's mind that he can control this match. Right now, there's nothing less than a fall or a disqualification that will um, help your team win this duel meet. Escape. One for Lofthouse. Score five to one. No stalling warning so far. There it is. There's your first. Oh, that was the second one. So stalling. Warning came earlier, one point for Jake Varner makes the score six to one. Varner doesn't look like he, uh, he moved up a weight. He looks actually the bigger of the two here. It's very nice in that weight class there, but and I think this is a better weight class for him too because he tends to wrestle a little bit high and see he doesn't you know bend his legs very much and kind of walks right into you. And I think that uh, it'll be easier for him to get in on shots on those 97 pounders as opposed to 84 pounders. Always been a tough wrestler in the top position. At the end of the second period, the score is six to one. One of those points is a stalling point against Lofthouse, going for Jake Varner. Ready? Yeah, I, I don't understand that call either. I, I would have went down. Lofthouse uh, chooses up and neutral. But he did a pretty good job the last 30 seconds, and maybe that's what he's thinking. But Varner is a little bit limited on his uh, his attack motion here at yeah. this point. Yeah.
Scramble situation here, double overhooks. Garner stays That's in. That's that edge of the mat. I'll tell you, you got to stay tough on the edge. Two more points for Varner. Eight to one. Not much time left for Jake Varner to uh, try to somehow get six points for his team if he can disqualify him or pin him. But he's um, three stalling calls away from disqualifying, and so it's... It's not going to happen in the last minute. Two more takedowns. Somehow he's going to have to uh, take Lofthouse down to his back and pin him for Iowa State to get those six points. Well, I think that the, uh, the Iowa coaching staff would like to see probably their wrestler just go in there and maybe you know challenge him a little bit here with a with a shot. I mean, well, he needs to go in there, but he's backing off on that on that uh, wizard situation. Yeah, edge in the mat. Two more points. The score's 12-3. A nine-point lead with uh, riding time. Wipe them off on the coach, See, they're uh, getting some instruction from the corner here. Tom Brands is on him. A little uh, uh, blood time out there, so. Well, coach is going to get some instruction. Give some instruction here. 35 seconds left in the third period here at 197 pounds. Got one more match to go, heavyweight. Iowa's out in front, 20 to 8. Iowa State's Jake Varner is on his way to winning this match, but whether it would be by three, four, or more is yet to be determined, but not much time left. These two teams could uh, easily meet again here later on in the year at the national duels, which are being hosted by University of Northern Iowa, ranked number one and two. That's it, build it, let's go, both of you. Still red. I don't see anything that has changed that. No. Um, two, these are two elite programs right yeah. now. Yeah, that's a big win for Jake Varner. He tacks on riding time. The score is 13 to three. Gets a 10 point win, which gives four points for the team. Now it's 20 to 12 in favor of Iowa with one match left. A few people leaving, but uh, this, this really um, could have came down to the heavyweights. And both these heavyweights are pretty good wrestlers. I mean, yeah, you take that 141 pound match and turn it around and it'd be 17 to 15 going into a heavyweight match. Um, and so it, it, it was down to seconds that made the difference. Well, that's what, uh, as a fan of wrestling, I think mean, that's what I like seeing is that, you know, both these teams are, are very competitive and, you know, and, and you talk about being in a tournament then, you know, you don't really know who has the advantage. Oh, nice. Single leg attempt there at the edge of the mat. It's Brisky doing a nice job of fading back into his own shot. We've got Dan Erickson, the heavyweight for Iowa, versus Give David Zabriski from back. Iowa State. Zabriski, one of the top three Guys, heavyweight wrestlers in every poll. Dan Erickson up from 197. This is his first time at heavyweight this year. Undefeated on the year, 7 0. Oh. He actually. Yeah. Mo worked on it last year in the offs, you know, during the red shirt year. Put on some pretty good weight. I didn't see what he weighed in at today, but I think he's pushing 240. Junior from Eagle, Idaho. Eagle High School. Zabriski from New Jersey, Branchville, New Jersey, High Point High School. Zabriski a junior, red shirt junior. Erickson also a junior. Nice shot by Zabriskie, but basically coming through Erickson's underhook and under the underhook, Erickson's forcing right now with the right hand side. Zabriskie probably more so than a lot of heavyweights. Once he gets into a tie, he likes to circle, <coughs> circle and comes down, and then he just blows right through. Guy has has some good powerful powerful shots. If he problem is early in his career, he's he's going up against quite a few guys that were. You know, really heavy, but uh, known for keeping a high pace in, in the match, and this one looks a little bit slow paced for what he's used to. Zabriskie already has a really good win this year against Massey from Wisconsin, and ranked number two, and two good-looking heavyweights here. They look a lot alike, and, and uh, Erickson really uh, 
built himself up into a, a viable uh, uh, heavyweight here. Doesn't look light at all, does he? Yeah, he's got a big set of legs. He, so. He's actually um, not bending his hips enough, he's, um, or his knees. A little bit high. His is kind of a, you know, not a real tall heavyweight, so he looks like he's in pretty good position to score just about at any time. A decent shot by Erickson, but a lot of weight there. Low. A lot of low hips. This is what we were talking about here, circling off the tie and dropping in on a shot. Both teams here would like to pick up this last win, walk away, feel a little better whether he lost the meet or won the meet. Well, David Zabriskie, as we said, ranked number two heavyweight. Uh, every win's important for him as he positions himself to uh, make a run at the NCAA championship. A couple other heavyweights, uh, Rochalt from Oklahoma State, Nassie from Wisconsin. But right now, Dan Erickson is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with David Zabriskie, the favorite here for Iowa State. 0-0 zero -zero after the first period. Zabriskie from Iowa State chooses down. Erickson will go on top. You're looking at Dan Erickson right there. Elbow last and hold it. Here we go. Red down, green on. Right back up on his feet here, Zabriskie. And Erickson doing a pretty good job of following him here. But, but you said it, he's following him, so he's um, kind of reacting to Zabriskie, so I don't know how long that can happen. Okay, he's got to actually again. take over the action on the top again. position if he wants to really control and keep him from getting to his feet, but uh, I think there's okay. Red blood. a little Bleeding. bloody nose right yeah, there. And you're right, uh, Dan, you were talking about this is important for Iowa State, for Zabriskie right here to uh, just from a, a mental standpoint because um, Iowa State has uh, um, really wrestled um, well in many, many matches here. And so they don't want to um, have their favored wrestler walk away getting beat here. Well, you take a look at favored wrestlers. Uh, you know, they, Gallic was ranked higher than Sertzis. I think Gallic was ranked number one. Yeah, and then you've got uh, Reader, obviously, uh, ranked higher than Morningstar. So, you know, adding three to that uh, top total would not be a psychological advantage for Iowa State. Nice well, job of is, following He is doing a good job with him. Yeah, you just keep it as yeah, hips good tight. Job. Boy, the crowd likes that. Great ride by uh, Dan Erickson. Has a good sense of his own weight on top of Zabriskie. Well, I really believe in that in the top position. Don't give up any uncontested escapes. Well, I don't really understand that call. I don't think you can be out of bounds at, uh, until you're both out of bounds. Isn't that right? That's correct. But you know what? He could have called a potentially dangerous. Made it look a little better. Crowd didn't like it. Of course. Dan Erickson and answering the question of many, how good is he? Because he's kind of the unknown. And uh, he is answering the question right now as he not just rides and follows, but he is putting a lot of pressure on Zabriskie. He's got that wing tied up uh, here. He's got to get right it back. He's got to get now. it back yet. He doesn't have it good right there. He'll, he'll lose it. I don't know. Yeah, he'll lose it if he don't. Now the head's on the mat, though. Well, he's, he's, yeah, but the shoulder is, too. He's got the wrong weight on the wrong side. But it's good enough to ride, and that's probably important as anything right now. And he's wearing Zabriskie down. Yeah, if he gets his hips, hips down, he'll, 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 if he gets his hips down, he can he can turn him. Uh, the referee's got to be okay with that. The referee's got to be fine with that. But, it, but again, <laughs> milking the clock here, 33 seconds. Zabriskie right. coming up hard, pops his hips oh. out and goes. Yeah, but see, he, he didn't fight after he got to his feet. I mean, he fought all match. 24 seconds left in the second period. One escape for Dave Zabriskie and puts him up ahead one to nothing. But the match has uh, been dominated here in the last minute 40 by Erickson until that escape in the top position. Question is, what did that take out of Zabriskie? Well, you know, Erickson, looks like he's Erickson ready to shoot. working pretty hard, too. And look at his ankle right there. It's pretty close. Good call, Dan. <laughs> With Three seconds left, Dan, you saw it. So did David Zabriskie. He gets what could be a, a very match 
I'm saying the home, it's the first time I really saw his stance, you yeah, know, and yeah, his butt's he, too high. He, he has a nice, I saw it in the first period, but I, you could react in the first period better. 3-0 now. What was 0-0 with Erickson riding Zabriskie and uh, almost turning him, except they went out of bounds, is now 3-0 in, in favor of David Zabriskie over Erickson. And he's knocking the riding time down, too. Minute 15 riding time advantage for Erickson from that second period. Comes up, hand fighting, got an opportunity to score, oh. and he keeps the riding time. A minute seven, seven seconds is uh, better than two. I mean, well, that's a, he keeps his right foot out there. He's, uh, the brisk is gonna be able to get it again. Or his left foot. No, Zabriskie's not, Zabriski not the type of wrestler who will just try to hold on to a lead here. A takedown would win it if he could hold Zabriskie down because of riding time. In favor of Dan Erickson. Zabriskie out front. Minute 10 left. Iowa State wrestler trying to uh, wait. walk away with the win and salvage. There's that ankle. A cyclone. Uh, Psyche, There's take that down. Is. Bad shot. I uh, just the energy level just was. I could tell that uh, you, you know, you felt like it take a lot out of the bottom guy. I think it took a lot out of the top guy. Yeah, dude. good point. The way it looked like it, just isn't re moving like he was in the first period. He made a couple good shots there, but he just uh, the last shot wasn't so good. David Zabriski stuffed him on, right around him. Five Come to on. one, the yeah. score. Riding time no longer for Dan Erickson. 25 seconds left, and Zabriskie looks like he's in charge. Head to outside shot uh, when you're when you're tired is is, is dangerous. Green, you're locking up down there. Come on. Uh, so you just got to suck it up. You just got to suck it up a little bit. Stalling on Dan Erickson. Yeah. Yeah. A few seconds left. The Cyclones are going to get a win, but Iowa. Had one, two, three, four, five, six, six wins tonight. The Hawkeyes did. Iowa State had four wins. Iowa State will go back and they will, uh, as Jim, you said, they will see some places where they could have had those wins. Well, anytime you lose a meet by less than six points, you're sitting there going, okay, how could I, how could we have turned this around? And, and it's always one match. It's always one match. And you saw a few matches there that were, could have gone either way. Uh, 41 and 65, and we thought were the toss up matches. But Iowa came out here, got the best in those matches, and uh, comes home with a victory. Well, once again, the final score is Iowa, the number one ranked Hawkeyes, 20 and the number two ranked Iowa State Cyclones, 15. Thanks for watching. Now for Dan Gable and Jim Gibbons, I'm Tim Johnson saying goodbye from Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, Iowa. I came in to